Hello everyone, FPL Raptor here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In today's video we have my Game Week 33 transfer plans. I've got two free transfers to use because I'm free hitting in 34 and don't want to burn one. So we'll discuss in today's video all of the possible combinations that I'm thinking of ahead of the deadline. If you do enjoy today's video, please do smash that like button and if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe as well. But without further ado, let's jump into it. So guys, before we take a look at my team for game week 33 and also look at my possible transfer plans with those two free transfer transfers before I free hit in 34 and also what am I going to do beyond 34 as well, let's very briefly review game week 32. And sadly, it was a red arrow for me, but it was a very, very, very small red arrow. One more point and it would have been green. And to be honest, I've had back-to-back -back very big green arrows and a little bit of luck as well. I mean, I got the 14-pointer from Garnacho last week. Very, very lucky there. Obviously, Izak getting two penalties the week that we wildcarded. So I've had quite a bit of luck in the recent weeks. Also, some good decisions in there as well. So I am fine getting a red arrow. And in all honesty, I'm pretty happy with my decision-making this week. I really had two key decisions to make because my transfer was just Lascelles to Van Heck, which was really easy and Van Heck sat third on my bench. The two real key decisions for me was which goalkeeper to start out of Raya and Petrovic and who to captain. And those two decisions went very well. So started Raya instead of Petrovic. Petrovic conceded twice because Chelsea are very stinky defensively. And obviously Raya and Arsenal kept a clean sheet because they are absolutely remarkable defensively. And one of my possible transfer plans is to sell Raya. And now I'm thinking, I don't know if I can do that. Aston Villa looked like an okay sort of selling point for some of my potential Arsenal players ahead of what is coming in the future considering I'm free hitting in 34 but now I'm looking at it defense wise and thinking I want some coverage because they just keep clean sheets virtually every week and even if they don't keep a clean sheet they're always very very close so very happy with the decision to start Raya over Petrovic but to be honest the reason that I wanted to start Raya over Petrovic is because I felt like I had cover with Gusto if I'd have known Gusto was out I may well have chosen to start Petrovic. I just didn't want that double up because I was a bit unsure about Chelsea. So a little bit of luck there, but I am very happy with that. And then, like I said, captaincy was the other key decision for me. Realistically, there wasn't a lot between it. Salah and Haaland got eight. Son and Palmer got five each. As long as you own all four, captaining Palmer or Son ahead of Salah or Haaland basically lost you three points. If you don't own the one that you obviously didn't captain, then it becomes a little bit more difficult and you probably lost out on more points. But largely, for those of us that own the four of them, there wasn't much between it. And I feel like it kind of deserve that. I know we want big swings in FPL in our favor. This for me didn't deserve a big swing. There are some decisions where I'm like, that is a genuine 50-50 and it doesn't deserve a 15-20 point swing. So I'm kind of glad that there wasn't a lot between them. And Salah, yes, was very lucky to get the penalty, but that is why you captain penalty takes. And I'm fully aware, by the way, Palmer, Son, Salah and Haaland are all penalty takers. But I mean, you'll know from my channel, I'm very big on penalty takers. I have been all season. I have been in the past too. I feel like even myself, who constantly drones on about how much I love having penalty takers, and if I've got a key decision on captaincy or benching, always go with the penalty taker. I still feel like even I don't give enough credit for how important penalty takers are in FPL, because you are just tapping into variance every week. You could just get these massive points hauls, and if they also add some open play goals and assists on top of that, that's when you get those monster scores. So I'm not saying don't pick, only pick penalty takers. Obviously, pick players like Ollie Watkins, who was fantastic once again. You don't need penalties, but I just think it's such a cheat code in FPL and I love the fact that most of my attackers are on penalties outside of Darwin really but Darwin does continue to return and I know people are very frustrated and I am frustrated as always owning Darwin but he has now returned two weeks in a row and he's doing okay he could definitely do better doesn't tend to pick up any bonus points by the way because he just misses so many chances he loses the ball quite often he has lots of shots off target basically if you know the BPS ruling system Darwin is the opposite of what you want for bonus points but there aren't many forwards that are outscoring him at the moment anyway. If you'd gone for a Solanke instead of a Darwin, you'd actually be down on that if you wildcarded at the same point as me. It's only Izak, really, that's been really smashing it. There are some other forwards out there that you could have potentially gone for, like a Chris Wood, who's done, well, pretty much every week. But I think realistically, out of the choices we had, Darwin has been performing pretty well, so I'm happy to get another five points from him. Outside of that, is there much else to discuss? Eight Nuri was very, very disappointing. He's one of those picks where... It's sort of my favorite pick in FPL because when we wildcarded in game week 30, not many people had him. I think he was about 9 or 10% ownership. I didn't then need to play him in 30, but I played him in 31 and 32. He gets a goal and an assist, but no bonus points in either game. And obviously in game week 32, he came off before the 60th minute, so didn't get that second appearance point. And it may well have been that he, he got subbed off quite a lot. He could have potentially banked the clean sheet with a sub, although that, that probably would have been quite lucky. But 
it kind of feels like one of those now he's come off with a potential injury as well. It was so close to greatness. He's still been a great pick getting me a goal and an assist, especially when not many defenders are getting anything outside of Arsenal defenders, really. But it was a little bit frustrating that he, he came off before the 60th minute. And now that looks like a potential other issue that I need, need to deal with in my team. I will just say on the defenders, Porro getting 11 points and your doggy getting two was painful. But this is why you pay extra for Porro. And what I noticed when I was watching the Spurs game is Madison didn't take pretty much any set pieces. It wasn't that Porro and Madison were sharing them. Porro was pretty much taking everything, especially corners. So I do just think Porro is probably, I don't know if he's worth the extra money, but he is certainly a better asset than you, Doggy. So if I had unlimited funds, Porro would definitely be in my team. I chose to go with you, Doggy. Hopefully he pops up with an attacking return in the next few weeks. I think that's pretty much it to discuss for game at 32. So a small, very, very small red arrow with 64 points puts me on 1,964 points total. Let me know down below in the comments, how many points did you get for game week 32 and was your arrow green or red? So guys, this is the way that the team is currently looking ahead of game week 33. As I always say, we'll have a team selection video later in the week with all of the updated information from the midweek games, plus anything from press conferences, injury updates, and more. And there'll be the deadline stream too. So this is just like an early look at what I'm doing with my team for game week 33. I've currently got 1 million in the bank. My team value, despite selling a lot of players that I had money tied up in on my game week 30 wildcard, the team value just continues to climb. So I think I'm in a very strong position with a very strong squad and money in the bank. And I've also got those two free transfers as well. Now, usually if I was in a strong position with two free transfers, I would always say use one and roll the second, which is what I did in game week 32. But remember that I am free hitting in 34, bench boost 37. And because I'm free hitting in 34, you will essentially go into then 35 with one free transfer, regardless of how many transfers you go into 34 with. So when you play the free hit, it essentially resets the amount of free transfers you have. So if you are planning to free hit in 34 and you've got two now, you basically need to use both of them, otherwise you will burn one. Now, if you just see your team as absolutely perfect, then don't make transfers for the sake of it. But I think for most of us that have wildcarded recently, there are probably two, three, four things that you could do with your team that would at least improve it not only now, but for the future too. So I need to use both free transfers in an ideal world. At the very least, I'll use one of them. And so what I'm starting to think about is obviously I'm looking to bench boost in 37, but I also want a strong team for post game week 34. So from 35 onwards, because that's when a lot of people will be wildcarding. So not only am I looking at can I improve my team for this week, which some of the transfers may potentially do, but also how can I get my team in a position where I'm not massively behind in 35. And then of course, for my bench boost in 37, I'm probably looking at removing some of my single game week players for potential doublers, or at least players that have better fixtures in 37. So running through my team regarding like players that just don't need to come out this week for me, I think Petrovic is fine for the time being, but he, he may get another mistake for Chelsea and Sanchez is now fit and waiting. So I do worry that, I don't think that Petrovic will just be completely dropped, but I do worry that Sanchez might get the odd game, potentially. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I'd love to know down below if you're a Chelsea fan, is Petrovic's position at risk right now? But until we actually see him dropped, I'll just keep him. Even if there are rumors spreading around, I don't think it's worth a transfer unless I'm absolutely sure or unless I want to bring in an, another outfield Chelsea player such as a Jackson. But for the time being, Petrovic is fine. In the defense, Gusto is fine because apparently he was ill and rested. So I would expect him to be back for 33. But even if we got news that he's not available for 33, I think I'd still keep Gusto because of double game at 35 and double game at 37. So Gusto's fine. Van Heck I've just brought in because he's got a good fixture this week and the double in 37. And then you Doggy is the other one that absolutely doesn't need to be sold because he's got two double game weeks. Eight Nuri and Bradley, obviously neither of them double in 37 and they've both got issues associated with them. Eight Nuri pulled up with an injury, could potentially be long-term, although I think Gary O'Neill said it's, it's unlikely to keep him out long-term and he could be available for game week 33. So th therefore I'm probably in less of a rush to sell Eight Nuri because he looks absolutely brilliant at the moment and he's got very good fixtures. In 35, he's got Luton at home and in 37, when I'm looking to bench boost, he's got Crystal Palace at home. So I don't actually feel the need to rush Eight Nuri out of my team. I'd be pretty happy bench boosting him. I don't need all doublers. I think single game players can often outscore them. So Eight Nuri would only be a transfer out if I really need to. And then I've got Bradley on the bench. Bradley, again, if he's available for this week, and let's say that Trent isn't back in time, which probably looks quite likely now, and let's see how many minutes he gets midweek. If he gets a good amount of minutes, but not too many, and Trent is not available... It's going to be difficult to sell Bradley before Crystal Palace at home because he'd probably go into my starting 11, potentially ahead of either Gusto, Van Heck, or Aitner. I think I'd have him ahead of all three of them, especially given that it's a home fixture. 
So Bradley is all going to depend upon his minutes midweek, but also on top of that, is Trent? Is there any chance that Trent's back? Or are there predictions that Gomez will start a right back? If there are any doubts around Bradley, because I'm going to sell him from 35 onwards anyway, I'll just get rid of him this week with one of my free transfers. So in defense, I think the only transfers that are likely are one of eight Nuriel Bradley out. I should just say on Raya, Raya is another potential transfer out, but it feels difficult given how they're defending at the moment. But from 35 onwards, again, anyone that wildcards in 35 is not having David Raya. They probably aren't even having Gabriel, just due to the way that the fixtures fall. So if I'm not going to have Raya from 35 onwards, do I just bank on the fact that Villa might score? They're going to be without Douglas Louise, which is a massive loss, but Ollie Watkins is fantastic. So maybe I do just bank on it this week and just get a better keeper in place for the bench boost. So goalkeeper in defence wise, Raya, Aitnuri and Bradley are three potential transfers out. Petrovic, Gusto, Van Heck and Udogi at the time of me recording, no plans to remove them. In the midfield, it's a lot more straightforward for me. Parmesan, Salah, Garnacho, no chance of being sold this week. Garnacho is perfect. He looks brilliant at the moment, by the way. Does keep getting early subs, which I don't really understand unless he's got some serious fitness issues. But I love Garnacho. I think he's exactly what I need in this team to free up the funds to go elsewhere. Palmer and Son have the double-double. They're fantastic. And Salah, I'm just going to wait until the last minute to sell. And to be honest, at the moment, based on my current plan, which I'll show you at the end of the video, I'm not going to sell Salah for the season. I'd, I'd, I'll just bench boost him against Aston Villa away. And he's got a really nice home... Is it a home fixture in 38? He's got, he's got a decent fixture in 38. We'll discuss that a bit later. But I'll, I just want to hold him for the rest of the season. And I think it's actually quite a nice differential. If those that wildcard in 35 remove Salah, I don't mind it. And if I do choose to sell Salah in 37 for something like Foden, then so be it. But I'm not planning on selling Salah for the time being. I'm probably going to hold him through until at least 37. So the only midfielder that I am potentially looking to sell, which seems crazy off the back of him getting a 10-pointer, is Bakayo Saka. What I don't like about Saka is the fixtures, the lack of doubles outside of 34 when I'm free hitting, but also he's getting lots of early subs. He's not making it to 90 minutes now. So not only are you looking at a player that doesn't have the ideal fixtures and doesn't have the doubles when you need them, you're also looking at a player that isn't on the pitch that often. And we always say you need a player on the pitch to get the points. Saka can return before 60 minutes, but we saw him come off in the 63rd minute, and that is not the first time he's had an early sub. So I'm worried about Saka's minutes at the moment. And again, with the games against Bayern Munich coming up, and then if they progress further than that, they've got other games to worry about. I, I do just worry about Saka's minutes and how many minutes he's going to get in the surrounding Premier League games. Obviously, let's wait and see on that. I'm not saying I'm in a rush to sell Saka, but again, if I've got two free transfers to use this week and I want to get my team into a position where it's getting better and ready for 37 and where I'm not losing ground to others around me, Saka is not a player that I think many people will hold through 35, especially if they are looking to bench boost in 37. So maybe a move for Saka out this week for other players with good fixtures, and we'll discuss Phil Foden in the next section. It could be a potentially decent transfer. It does feel maybe one week early, but then in 35, he's got Spurs and then Bournemouth. So I feel like every week it's going to feel horrible selling Saka, but I do think it does make sense to do, given that you'll get extra fixtures from someone else and maybe even better fixtures too. So Saka is the only one out of my midfield five that I'm potentially looking to sell. And then for the front three, again, two of them are absolutely staying for me, which is Haaland and Isaac. Haaland will be my captain this week unless he gets really significant minutes and we think he's a real doubt for Luton. Um, then, then I might potentially look to, to captain someone else, but I think it will be Haaland. And Isaac, I just love him. He's, he's genuinely my favorite player in FPL at the moment. I know he didn't return in 32, but I mean, after the after what he did, 23, 23 points in two weeks for me in 30, 30 and 31. I can't really complain too much. He's been absolutely fantastic. And given the fixtures from 35 onwards, Sheffield United at home, Burnley away, double game week. I think it's like Brentford away in game week 38. Isaac will just be a season keeper unless he picks up an injury, of course, or unless Wilson is back earlier than we think. But for the time being, I love Isaac. And I think Spurs at home is actually a decent fixture, which basically leaves Darwin. And Darwin is someone that I am looking to sell at some point. It will, if it's not this week, it will be in 35. And if I have real issues in 35, it might be in 36. But there's no way Darwin isn't sold by sort of 35 or 36 time. So again, if I've got free transfers to use this week, is Darwin out a potentially decent move? We'll discuss in a second the players that I'd look to bring in. I don't love moving them out against Crystal Palace at home. I'd much rather do it in 35. I think they've got West Ham away. But again, if, it, if it's that or burn a transfer or use a transfer elsewhere, removing players that I don't really want to remove, then Darwin might just leave my team this week. So that's the current plan. Roughly, you know, the players that I'm roughly planning on keeping, the players that I'm looking to sell. Essentially, if they're doubling in 37 and they're fit and available, they're probably staying. And if they're not, then they're potentially on the chopping block. So let's now take a look in more detail at which transfers I might make in combination because I need to make two and which players might be coming into my team. 
So guys, now that you've seen my team for game week 33 and I've spoken about the players that I might be potentially looking to remove, here are all of the possible transfers that I can currently think of at the time of me recording. It may update throughout the week and I might start looking at some different players when I do more research. Remember, because I am free hitting in 34, as I said earlier in the video, I will need to use both free transfers if I don't want to burn any. And given that I have quite a few players not doubling in 37 and my team is a little bit behind where I think wildcarders will be in 35, I don't think it makes much sense to burn a transfer. So I am planning on using both this week. I won't be taking a hit, it will just be the two. And therefore it will, I think, be a combination of two of the below moves that you can see on your screen. So starting with the goalkeeper spot, I am still looking at selling Ryan. I know that seems crazy because that is my only Arsenal defensive cover and they are the best defense in the league. In fact, one of the best defenses we've ever seen in the league. And so it seems wild, but like I said, in 35, I'd be selling him anyway. My plan transfer in 35 in previous, in previous sort of future plans was actually Raya to Onana. So if I'm going to make the move in 35, all I am missing out on essentially, because I can obviously have one in 34 on the free hit, is Aston Villa at home. And I think there are easier fixtures in the Prem from a clean sheet perspective. So I'm not discounting a clean sheet here, but it's not a bad one to back against. And if I am to make it, it would be Onana or Pickford coming in. Now, I know Onana doubles in 37 and Pickford doesn't. But I do think that Everton, I know for a fact, Everton are a better defence than Manchester United. Outside of game week 37, I also do really like the Everton fixtures. Potentially like in game week 36, I think they've got a really, really nice fixture. This Luton away. Pickford could make some saves in that game. There's a potential for a clean sheet too. So I quite like Pickford's fixtures. And actually in 37, he's got Sheffield United at home. So yes, I'd prefer Onana, likely to make a lot more saves because he's got two fixtures. And if he gets a clean sheet in there, there's pretty much no chance that Pickford matches him. But could Pickford keep a clean sheet against Sheffield United at home? Yes. So I, I really don't mind the idea of going for someone like a Pickford instead of Onana. But I think at the moment, my favoured move would be Onana. So Raya to Onana is a possible move. It would actually free up a little bit of money for me too, because Onana is cheaper than Raya. In defense, like I said, it will be Bradley or Ait Nuri going out. And I've got the same three names here for both. If I make both these moves, let's say, I don't know, let's say Ait Nuri is confirmed out for a long-term period, which I don't think he will be. And also, Bradley looks like he's a doubt to start. I could sell both of them, and they would be two of my single game week players for 37 sold. And then I could bring in either two doublers or two players with better fixtures. And the three cheap players that I'm looking at at the moment... And by the way, I don't have to go super cheap. I would have all the way up to sort of, if I was selling eight Nuri up to about 5.5, 5.6. So I could even go for something like a Fabian share. But I don't think I'd want to invest all that money in my defense. So at the moment, I'm looking at Branthwaite, Maguire, and Dan Byrne. All very cheap. Obviously, Maguire and Byrne are the only two that double. Really nice fixtures in 35 for Maguire and Byrne. Although I think Branthwaite's got like Brentford at home. But I just think the three of these have kind of what I want, which is... I wouldn't mind bench boosting him in 37 because Maguire and Byrne will have the double. But as I said with Pickford, Branthwaite's got Sheffield United at home. I don't know where I'll lean here. Obviously, if I go Pickford in goal, I would not go for Branthwaite as well. I don't want to go for a double up on the Everton defence. So if I go for Onana in goal, I probably wouldn't go for Maguire in defence. So there is a possible combination where it's like Onana and Branthwaite or Maguire and Pickford, or I do just bring in a Newcastle defender, someone like a Dan Byrne, because I don't have Lascelles now. So I've, I've actually only got one Newcastle player, which is Isaac. I don't even have Gordon yet at the moment as well. So I don't mind the idea with the fixtures that they've got, Sheffield United, Burnley double. I don't mind the idea of bringing in another Newcastle player. And Dan Byrne does carry a little bit of attacking threat. Actually, in recent weeks, it's been very, very good. He had a goal disallowed as well in game week 32, I think it was, or 31. But he's had a goal dis disallowed recently. So I don't mind the idea of a Dan Byrne. So I think that two of these defenders will probably be coming in for me at some point, at the very least one. The reason that I'm not too keen on selling Aitnuri, Nuri, like I said, is I actually don't mind keeping him for 37 too. In a similar way to Branthwaite, if I had to bench boost with Aitnuri, Nuri, I wouldn't mind it. So I'm much more keen on selling Bradley than Aitnuri, Nuri, but it will largely depend on the news that we get. The one that I think genuinely could happen and has the by far the biggest potential to backfire is selling Saka. I don't want to sell him. Aston Miller are shipping goals for fun. They look really weak in defense. But this is a move that I want to make anyway. And in particular, the idea of getting to Foden against Luton at home is very nice. Because I, I genuinely think a lot of people would have sold him. Obviously, off the back of him getting benched in 30s before that benching. A lot of people were obviously had the early team news. Probably would have sold Foden. And obviously, people starting to move towards game week 34. He doesn't double. So... I do think that Foden's ownership will be at an all-time low. I think after this, it will grow, especially from 35 onwards. I think lots of people will have him. If we get some sort of information that he starts against Luton, or we think there's a very good possibility, I would prefer Foden against Luton at home to Saka against Villa at home. I don't think it's actually that 
I think it's pretty close, to be honest. I don't think it's an easy one, but I would prefer Foden. If you were on a free hit, you'd rather Foden than Saka. So if I can make that move for free and also improve my team for the future, maybe that is a move that deserves consideration. I would just hate to make this move if I didn't have some sort of, not either, either confirmation or a very good feeling that Foden starts against Luton because I would hate to be in a situation which is unfortunately what some people had in 32, which is Saka starts, gets a return and bonus and Foden doesn't even play. So I think this will depend on minutes midweek. It will depend on updates around whether Saka is fully fit or whether he's still struggling with the injury around Foden and whether we think he starts. But this is a move that I'm planning at some point. So why not maybe make it this week when I've got free transfers to use? The only other midfielder that I'm looking at at the moment is Anthony Gordon. But this, I don't think is the week to do it. Unless we get news that Saka's unavailable for some reason. Saka to Gordon this week doesn't... Even though I've got the transfers to use, that doesn't even feel like a bit, an upgrade for this week. Although I do really like Gordon at home and Spurs do concede chances. So maybe Gordon isn't the worst player, but it really would be Foden that I'd be looking to bring him. I have just added in here, if I do sell Darwin, like I said before, it's probably Cunha or Hoyland. But I think Hoyland is for me the one top of my list. Just because I, I want a doubler really in 37, if possible. And I know I said with the defenders, I, I feel like I, I don't mind having a single game player. With the attackers, I want a doubler. I think with the defenders, it's more so like Maguire and Byrne. I'm not sure I see a clean sheet in the double. Whereas with attackers, even with tricky fixtures, I'd rather have two bites of the cherry. It's why I brought in Morris for Haaland for game week 29 or for 28 and 29. Because extra fixtures for attackers, I think is even more important than extra fixtures for defenders. So I am more keen on Hoyland than I am Cunha. But if I do want a cheap attacker, Cunha's fixtures are there. It's just that he hasn't obviously got his start yet. and his, his minutes aren't quite secure. And that is putting me off alongside the fact that obviously Hoyland has the double too. But Hoyland's data recently has been appalling. And Man United aren't creating as many chances as we saw at the start of the season. And Hoyland went through that really nice spell of getting returns. But it has dried up quite a lot for him. And I've already got Garnacho. So I'm, maybe I'm less keen to go on the double up on the United attack. The only other player that's not here that maybe deserves consideration for me, obviously Nico Jackson, but I have three Chelsea, is actually Wissa. If you look at Brentford's fixtures, I spoke about Tony recently. Brentford's fixtures are very, very good. And I think a lot of people won't go there because they don't double in 34, they don't double in 37. But in 34 and 37, they've got good fixtures if you need them for a bench boost. And they've got Sheffield United at home this week. So I don't mind the idea, potentially, of a whistle. I could even go for a Regulon in defence or even an Embermo in midfield, by the way. But again, I think I would just rather bring in a double game with player. And to be honest, Darwin for this week, unless we really don't think he's going to start... I don't see any of the options that I've just spoken about being an upgrade on Darwin. So those are the possible transfers for this week. I don't really love any of them. I don't think any of them upgrade my team for this week massively, other than potentially Saka to Foden. But I think Saka's a better FPL asset because he's on penalties, of course, and his days is very good. So yeah, none of these really, I don't think massively benefit me this week, but I need to use two because of the way that the chips work. And I also do want to prepare for the future. If you were to force me right this second to make two transfers... I think it would be Raya to Onana and Bradley to Branthwaite. I don't like that, given that Raya's probably more likely than anyone else I could bring in to keep a clean sheet this week. And Bradley, if he plays, has a good chance for clean sheet and attacking returns. But Raya and Bradley are two players that are going to have to be sold for me before the bench boost, because I don't want a bench boost with either of them. Bradley probably won't be in the 11 by then. And Raya against Man United isn't a good bench boost keeper for me, particularly, although always a chance for a clean sheet. Uh, whereas with eight Nuri, I don't mind keeping him and holding him in the longer term. Saka, I don't think needs to be sold this week. I could assess it after 34. Maybe I don't want to go for Foden anymore. Maybe he gets benched against Luton again and I actually decide to go for Gordon. And then with Darwin, I think Darwin to Hoyland in 35 makes more sense. So yeah, at the moment, if you were to force me to make moves now, it's Raya to Onana and probably Bradley to Branthwaite. With that in mind, those aren't the definite confirmed transfers I'll update throughout the week, but let's now take a look at what my transfer plans, not only for this week, but for future weeks look like, so you can see how my team is, I'm planning on my team progressing for the remainder of the season. So guys, I've moved over to Fantasy Football Hub to just show you what my transfer plan is for the remainder of the season. I've not actually plugged any transfers in. I'm just going to sort of do it live and just show you what I'm roughly thinking because obviously if I make a slightly different move this week, then that affects 35. And if a certain player picks up an injury, then I, then I might throw up a spot. And it, I mean, it all becomes very, very difficult to try and plan in too much detail. But I can show you the rough plan and where I roughly see myself landing for 37. So this is the team for 33. If Bradley's available, we can see here based on the hub projections, I mean, he's projected to get more points than any of my other defenders. So if he is available, 
sorry, not if he's available, but if he's fine to play, no issues. Let's say we're expecting him to start. Trent isn't fully back and available. And we just think there's a very good chance Bradley plays. I will find it difficult to sell him. But if there are any doubts in my mind, let's say that there are rumors that Gomez could start. Maybe Bradley needs a bit of a rest. Trent has the chance of being back available. If there's anything making me doubt it, I will probably remove him because I think he's the biggest long-term issue for me. So let's just say for now, I do Bradley to Branthwaite because that I, I know he doesn't double, but I just like Branthwaite as an option. And then I do Raya to Onana. This is the way that the team would look for 33 if I just make those transfers. I wouldn't play Branthwaite though, right? I would play either eight and Uribe's available, ideally, or I would play you doggy just for the attacking threat because I know Chelsea are a bit stinky, but I don't expect Branthwaite to keep a clean sheet there. I would probably play Onana instead of Petrovic, despite it not being the highest on the projected points. I just feel like I don't want to double up on the Chelsea defence if Gusto's available. It, 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 they're just not a defence that I want to invest in. Well, I mean, I already own them, but I don't want to double up on them if I can help it. So that's the way that the team would look for 33. So I would have, obviously, them free hit in 34. I would have a free hit. I'll have plenty of free hit drafts for game week 34. Don't you worry. And then going into game week 35, I'd obviously only have the one free transfer. So if those are the transfers that I made, this is the way that the team would look. Remember that in 35, Chelsea and Spurs double. I don't have a third Spurs spot, a third Spurs asset at the moment. So I have the option if I want to, to go out and buy one in 35. But I don't think that I will because I actually like my options that I've got in my team at the moment. And I mean, the only spot that I could do it is Saka to like a Madison or a Richarlison. And that just... Uh, that doesn't fill me with that much hope. In fact, I'm quite okay with the idea of having Saka in 35. And the reason I say that is because pretty much everyone that wildcards in 35 isn't going to have Saka. So I quite like going up against those wildcarders with Saka if he's available and fit at that point. But so in 35, I would have the, sorry, Petrovic, Gusto and Palmer as the triple up on Chelsea. Yudogi and Son as the double up on Spurs. Eight Nuri against Luton at home, which feels great. Salah against West Ham. Isaac against Sheffield United at home. Haaland against Forest. Garnacho against Burnley. And then, like I said, Saka. I mean, this team is, is really, really strong. I'd currently have Darwin on the bench. I'd have Onana on the bench. And you can see Van Heck and Branthwaite. I did tweet about this a few weeks ago, but people hated it. I would love to know in the comments if you also hate it. I'm not ruling out a bench boost 35. Because I think for my bench boost in 37, I'll probably have two single game makers anyway. I'd have one free transfer here, by the way. If I wanted to fully commit to it, I could do either Saka to a Spurs midfielder if I wanted to make my starting 11 stronger, or I could sell one of Van Heck or Branthwaite for someone else that I think is slightly better. I mean, in 33, I could have even bought in Dan Byrne, who's got Sheffield United at home this week. I think I could build a very, very good bench boost. I could even do Darwin to Hoyland, right? That would make my bench stronger. I'd love to know down below what you think of a 35 bench boost, because it looks stacked, I think, anyway. At least, at least the goalkeeper's got a good fixture. You'll have a good attacker, too. So something to consider... But I wouldn't necessarily plan on a transfer in 35 unless I really needed it. Considering how strong my bench is, if any of my defenders miss out, then I would just bring one of my defenders off the bench. If any of my forwards miss out or attackers, I've probably got a good eighth attacker on the bench. So for 35, the plan is currently no transfer. But if I need one, I will have one to use. And if I have to take a minus four, the people that haven't wildcarded in 30 have been taking hits and stuff. So you do have to take hits usually at points when you haven't wildcarded for a while. So I am expecting to have to take a hit during this period. I don't plan on one. But I do expect that at some point it might become a necessity to make sure that my bench boost isn't an absolute horror show. So that's the plan for 35 is just to probably just roll with it as is because I've got some really strong players. 36 is a bit of a state, I'll be honest. Let me just optimize the team there. So I'll have Branthwaite come in. It's one of the reasons I like Branthwaite. I know Luton's not a great fixture from a clean sheet perspective, but I don't hate it. So here I would have two free transfers. If we're looking at players that have single game week fixtures, I've still got a few of them ahead of 37. And remember, this is 36 now. So I will essentially have three free transfers from this team to get towards a bench boost 37. But Branthwaite, I brought in happy to have. Salah, I'm happy to bench boost. And eight Nuri, worst case, I could bench boost as well. Which means I'm really looking at Darwin and Saka as the only single game weekers that I would ideally like to not bench boost if preferable. So... The issue is I don't really want to sell Saka against Bournemouth at home. And again, this feels like a really nice opportunity. People that wildcard will not have Saka. They'll have Foden in that spot. And I know Foden against Wolves at home, by the way, is really good. But could I back against him with Saka? I would argue yes. So Saka maybe stays one more week for me. But this is the point. I've got two free transfers. I need to do something. Darwin probably comes out for Hoyland. And I don't necessarily think that Hoyland's better for this week, by the way. But I could, if I wanted to, just play... 
Why is Hoyland not coming up? There we go. I could, if I wanted to, just play Garnacho instead, right? Hoyland doesn't have to play for me here, but I need to use at least one transfer. So let's just make that transfer, optimize the team again. This would set me up based in a 3-5-2. So yeah, they've, bench, they've benched Hoyland anyway, but that was just to get the transfer done. I would ideally like to roll again, because I think if you can go into 37 with two frees and try and leave your transfers as late as possible, that makes more sense, because it might be that actually I want to remove... I don't know, let's say one of my defenders picks up an injury. Maybe I do just bench boost with Saka on the bench. So going into 37, I will optimize the team. But obviously, Fantasy Football Hub isn't going to have the 37 doubles. Currently, the players with a single game week, let me see if I can count this correctly, is 8 Nuri, Branthwaite, Salah, Saka, and that should be it, right? So four. But like I said, Salah, I'm really happy to bench boost against Villa away because it's Salah. And Branthway, I've brought in with the specific purpose of bench boosting him. So if I've got two free transfers here, it might be eight Nuri and Saka, or it could be Branthway, or I just remove Saka and then try and bring in another optimal double game weaker. So for example, Saka could become Foden at this point if I want to. And then it might be that actually I say, do you know what? I know I've got, I don't know, you doggy in this spot, but I actually think Kieran Trippier could be the one. Or... I just do something like that. So if Trippier's gone down by then, I don't I don't think I'll have the money to do it now. I have exactly the money. Funds probably won't work out that perfectly, but maybe that's another move I can make if I want to as well. So let's just make those moves to say roughly the plan is to, to try and, if I optimize the team, I try and create the perfect bench boost team. But this will have Salah, Branthwaite, and then probably like a Van Heck and then Onana. It's not going to be a particularly great bench boost. And this is why I'm not overly fussed about it. I am, of course, building towards it. And I know I've just said I'm not fussed and yet every transfer is with that in mind. But I'm not fixating it so much that I will take tons of hits and remove really good assets just in the name of the bench boost. The reason I do like this idea of building towards 37 though, is 38 looks really nice because all of the teams and players that you want to own have good fixtures in 38. So at the moment... I wouldn't have Van Heck in there. What are you talking about, Fantasy Football Hub? I would have probably Garnacho in that spot. So Petrovic and Gusto, maybe not ideal. Maybe I'd play Onana in there. If I have Trippier and Udogi with good fixtures, a really good midfield five. And then Haaland and Izak up top. All of them have pretty good fixtures. The only notable omission that I could see here is I only have one Liverpool and zero Arsenal. So I'm only going to get be able to get a maximum of one more from those two teams in here. And if they are fighting for the league, that's not ideal. I've also only got two Man City as well. So it's not a perfect team for 38, but I still do think it looks really strong. So there we go. It won't happen this way. It never does. I mean, I've done this before where I plan so much in advance and one injury, let's say Haaland picks up a season ending injury. It changes everything, right? You've got loads more money to deal with. You have to remove Haaland to start with. You have to think about other doubler forwards. So it becomes a lot trickier. Then I maybe end up holding on to Darwin. Everything could change in a heartbeat. So I won't bother planning in any more detail than that. But just to let you know that the current plan, if I actually just go back to this screen here, is that the right screen? That is indeed. It will be basically a combination of two of these transfers. Or if something else crops up throughout the week, I'll of course adapt to that as well. I would love to know down below in the comments, what are your transfer plans for Game Week 33? So guys, there you have it. That is my Game Week 33 transfer plans video. I hope you did enjoy. And if you did, please do smash that like button. And if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe as well. I hope you have a fantastic week ahead. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.